Let's get into the news right away. No video intros here. I don't like to waste time. Let's start off with some SEO news. So Google's John Mueller says that keywords in the TLD or in your root URL are not a ranking factor. Now, normally I don't report on stuff like this because it's fluff. This was literally taken from, I don't know, like search engine, whatever, um, from a YouTube clip of, 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 the, of John Mueller talking. And uh, number one, take everything that Google says with a grain of salt. Not that he's wrong, but just they are the best PR company in the whole world. They are very good at protecting their secrets and protecting their own. They're not going to give away any information that was not previously uh, supposed to get out. There's no leaks here, right? So this shouldn't really come as a surprise. What does come as a surprise was that Ahrefs uh, ran a really awesome case study. They looked at 2 million different keywords and SERP results and they analyzed it for correlation, not necessarily causation, I believe, um, based on on page uh, factors like keywords on the page, uh, titles, uh, and URLs. Now, they found very interestingly that on page SEO is dead. I think that's a direct quote. I'll leave you a link. You can check it out for yourself. I have some mixed emotions about this, and I know a lot of my gray hat buddies out there are, are probably sitting there like, mother. TLDs and, and EMDs still work. So there was an algorithm update a couple of years ago called the EMD or exact match domain algorithm that supposedly attacked and devalued sites that use the keywords in their domain, right? So if you were a Miami contractor, miamicontractor.com, I still see these domains ranking today. I don't know if that's because they have so much equity over time built up if they were grandfathered in, but I also see a lot of newer sites that are EMDs that are kind of shooting up in the rankings. So here's my opinion on it. Number one, always test, right? And don't just take anybody else's word for it because there are so many factors that go in. They have not tested in your market with your niche. So you have to test it for yourself. If that means setting up two domains, so be it. But if you do decide to go with the EMD or keywords in the domain, here's my thought. Do not plan on expanding. If you are a Miami contractor and you want to rank for Miami contractor, then by all means get miamicontractor.com. However, if you plan to expand to Tampa or Colorado or anywhere else, you're screwed. You're not going to be able to rank easily or at all for those keywords because that domain is telling Google, hey, this entire website is about being a Miami contractor. Anything else is outside of the scope. So if you only sell socks, you can get socks.com. But again, if you want to expand to shoes, t-shirts, then it's probably not a good idea. It's going to be harder to rank for those keywords. So I always recommend going branded and building equity in brand brand equity into your domain. Not only do I think it's better for SEO, but it allows you to pivot in the future, right? Like if two years from now, you, you know, Weber's, I don't want it to be an SEO agency anymore. I want it to be a tool. I can pivot it. I just have to build some different links, change the on page, all sorts of different stuff, but change the content on the site. Um, and I can pivot that domain and, and, and leverage that equity. So, you know, again, there's a lot of lip service on this. If you listen to me, that's fine. If you don't, whatever. Let's just move on to paid search. <laughs> so Google is rolling out green ads globally. So you've probably seen this on your mobile device. Normally there's a little ad tag that's yellow. Um, they just rolled this out to green. And uh, they said that after testing, they received positive feedback from advertisers. And uh, there was no difference in click-through rate. Sorry, I'm doing a lot of bunny quotes. Today. No difference in click-through rate between the yellow and the green. I'm calling that one, Google, because if you put the green, I'll do it right here, the green versus the yellow, the yellow clearly stands out more and people do not like to click on ads. I actually ran this by my girlfriend who doesn't even know what SEO, she doesn't know what I do for a living. She, I ran this by her and I was like, look at which one would you click on? If you know this is an ad, would you click on it? She was like, no, of course not. I'm gonna scroll down to the organic listing. So there you go right there. I mean, I think that this is Google struggling to get revenue back up, display ads, suck. Nobody clicks on them. That business is dead. They are looking for other ways to drum up more revenue. If you are a paid search marketer, this is awesome because I really think you're going to see better results from these green ads. They are much more incognito and much more hidden. They Google, I don't know, must have did some tap, do, tap dancing around FTC guidelines because this is clearly, clearly, clearly some sort of way to um, you know, push searches to click on more ads. If you're an SEO, I mean, it is what it is, dude. The game just got harder. You've now got four more uh, competitive results on top of you that people might not know are ads. So, you know, just do what we do and adapt, buddy. Let's move on to Facebook because I've got a couple of things in here to talk about. So Canvas ads can now run as organic posts. So if you don't know what a Canvas ad is, um, it's basically almost like a magazine format within an ad. You can add a banner, you can add text, you can add videos, you can add uh, image. You can basically build like a, almost like a, uh, what do you want to call it? an article 
within Facebook. This was uh, launched as an ad format. I tested it. Um, this is really better for bigger brands that are looking to push into off of TV, off of print, and more onto Facebook. Facebook is just brilliant, um, much better than Google in my opinion. Um, this is how you drum up revenue, Google, just so you know. You don't trick people into clicking on ads. You offer new formats that are actually helpful, just FYI. Um, don't sue me. <laughs> but uh, I, I, now you can run these and test them as organic posts to see if they work for you. In my opinion, there are a lot of work. You need a creative person to put together these different formats, otherwise the images are gonna look granulated. Um, and you've gotta have some sort of story format to work with on these. Um, you know, I'm happy to consult and help you with that, by the way, if you wanna hire me to do that. But uh, if you're a big budget advertiser, definitely test this out with organic and then push into the paid uh, to see how it works for you. So kudos to you, Facebook, for being smart with your platform. Um, after that, uh, a Facebook VP said in an interview recently that uh, five years from now, he believes that the news feed will be all video. Um, this is important because he said that he's their, their data is showing rarely that people are sh uh, showing text updates. Video is just dominating. Um, you know, there is a very strategic reason why I record this as video and don't do a roundup. I think blogging is pretty much on its way out personally. People don't like to read. I cannot tell you the last time I read something. I don't even read emails. I don't read Skype messages. Um, anybody who works with me knows. I'm like, dude, just can call me. I don't have time to read your stuff. That's how the world is going. That's why video is so powerful. So really, really please start looking at ways you can stop pushing out crap blog content and potentially pushing into video. You'll be adding a lot more value to people. Um, Facebook is also putting maps in ads and plans to measure store visit for advertisers. Another great addition for Facebook. Kudos to you guys again. Um, basically, if you're a local business, you run a local bakery, you run a, a, a store that sells shoes um, in person, um, you can now run these ads to drive foot traffic and Facebook will track it, for you, track it for you. There's a little interactive map that shows where you are. Again, test it out, do it before it gets too crowded. Um, I have no doubt that it's gonna be effective for those who get in early. Um, moving into analytics, Google Search Console adds keyword comparison reports. This allows you to compare two different keyword queries head to head, impressions, traffic, um, volume, click through rate, all that different stuff to really test the value of the traffic coming from Google. Um, kudos to you on that Google. Search Console is to me and analytics are by far the two best tools on the planet and they're free. If you're not using them, uh, you know, maybe I'll leave the link to somebody's guide under here that you can learn how to do it. Um, let's talk about YouTube. They launched a new tool helping marketers and small business owners craft better videos. So basically, uh, it's uh, the YouTube director suite and uh, it's mobile. So you just go on your phone and there's templates and it'll be like, well, I haven't looked at it, I'm just assuming, but it'll be like, you know, film 10 seconds of people smiling, uh, film 10 seconds of people doing work. And it helps you piece together uh, production quality videos right from your phone. Again, like I'm huge on video. Um, if you're a small business, please start looking at ways to do it. Um, don't just crap out blog content that's too crowded already. Um, um, it's not worth your time actually to be honest with you. So let's talk about some tech stuff. A couple of things in here that are, that's that's pretty cool. Um, let's talk about Apple Maps first. So Apple uh, survey finds that 70% of Apple iPhone users prefer to install Google Maps on their phone over Apple Maps. Um, really not surprised. I've been an Apple user my entire life. Love the platform, love everything, but Maps is horrible. I don't know if you guys watch Silicon Valley, but there's a funny a funny line from it where they were talking about the launch of a product and they were like, how bad is it? And they were like, it's Apple Maps bad. So. How bad is this? Be honest. Is this Windows Vista bad? It's not iPhone 4 bad, is it? Don't tell me this is Zoom bad. I'm sorry, Gavin. It's Apple Maps bad. It's really bad, but on the same note, Apple recently opens up Siri, Maps, and Messages to third party developers. So, uh, you know, with all the explosion, AI and all this stuff coming in, I think we're gonna see some really cool stuff happening with uh, Apple Messenger, uh, iMessage, whatever you wanna call it, Maps and Siri. Um, and I really think that opening this up is gonna allow for some new innovation and some third party companies and marketers to really get their hands dirty. And uh, potentially what I see happening is Apple Maps rivaling Google Maps in terms of local search. You know, it hasn't really been talked about that much in terms of optimizing for Apple Maps because People don't really use it. Um, so I potentially see this picking up speed, hopefully, and uh, just another thing for us SEOs to worry about. Well, not me, I don't really do local search, but for you local SEOs, enjoy. Um, finally, I'm leaving this one for last on purpose. This is very interesting. It might ruffle some feathers out there, but AI computers are writing short articles, ads, and essays, and they're doing it very well. So a few weeks back, I wrote a post about emerging tech and the impact that it will have on marketing. AI was one of them. 
This is a perfect example of how jobs are gonna start going out the door. Um, again, I just mentioned it, like I think blogging is on its way out. There is so much crap out there and once these bots start taking over and writing all of your news updates, all of your social updates, all these blog posts, all this BuzzFeed garbage that's on the web right now, writing is going to die. The web writing is gonna be very different and I think Google is going to have to stop indexing it because there's gonna be so much content, it's gonna be very, very hard for the algorithm to detect what's human, what's not human, what's quality and what's not. Um, so. A couple of things, number one, if you're a freelance writer, honestly dude, start looking for other ways to make money. I'm dead serious about that because if you do not, you will be out of money. I'm telling you, this is going, this is happening. Whether you like it or not, writing is going to be devalued. It's just the way it is. Books will be written in 20 years by computers, that's it. Uh, sorry, it is what it is. What you can do is two things. Number one, start looking into things like VR, video, things like these different mediums that require a human to do it. Um, you know, real person to person engagement online as much as you can. Start looking into that. Become a video marketer, it's so much more effective. Um, or become the best expert in your field that you can possibly be. I truly believe that the only written content that will matter, I don't know if you'll ever be able to, a computer will ever, ever be able to, to mimic the insights, and I could be wrong, of a, a, a true expert in a field. So if you are a true expert, work on building that expertise and creating the best possible content that you can before it's too late, excuse me, before it's too late and we're overrun by bots. So um, that's all the news I got for this week. Um, I like to cut right through it. No video intros here, no fluff. Let's just get into the stuff that matters. If you like it, please, please comment, please like. Uh, that's what drives more views on YouTube and Facebook. So please interact, um, please comment, please tell me I'm a jackass if that's what you think. I don't care as long as you're commenting, I'm happy. Uh, and then like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next week's episode. Take care.